All right, so hey, how you guys doing? This is Neil. It's been a while since I did an art tutorial. So this one, it's how to color your manga or comic with watercolors. And the watercolors I'm going to be using, uh, they're actually very, very affordable for this set here. It has, has pretty much every color you'll ever need. It's just fantastic, and it's a uh, Kiritake. So this is the, the Japanese Kiritake and also the Kiritake brush. The brush is a little bit expensive, but it's an amazing brush. I mean, you can cover a lot of ground with it, or you can do really nice thin line work. But there's other brushes too that I like for covering bigger areas, even smaller areas, and working with that you can find at local art stores um, like Royal and, and Langekul. This is a number eight, I think. Yeah, number eight. And I have I have a few different brands like that. You can you can try them out and see what brand works best for you. But this one you have to order online unless unless you can find it somewhere. Unless you live in Japan, then you can probably find it. In a, in a store but anyway let's get started this is a comic page from my on my comic end of all uh, so it's called end of all comic.com if you want to check it out and this one this is one a page I went ahead and, and took out and uh, decided to ink it typically these are all done digitally but I decided I'll go ahead and and take this page out and ink it traditionally so it was, it was inked with these uh, traditional pens here and don't worry, we're going to get to the lesson here in just a minute. Uh, Fable, uh, Faber Castell, very awesome pens, love them. And notice how even with the pen work, I have darker lines and thicker lines on my main subjects, the ones that are in, in the front and the foreground more. I want them to stand out more than the stuff in the background. It also helps when you actually have the color for it to stand out more. I'm just using something inexpensive here, just a, a plastic. It works great. Add, add some water here to the center. Roll your brush. Um, to get started, I'm probably not going to use this brush though. And then I have a paper towel here to wipe off my, my brush when it has too much color on it. I'm probably going to use something like this one here, um, or maybe even this one because it's kind of smaller. So I'll go with this brush here. I'm going to get it wet. Now, what I like to think about first thing is think about it as like um, almost like you have layers right so the first thing is i think about the background first i got this background sky that i want to color in and i want it to be kind of um blue and maybe kind of fading just a little bit of orange yellow just so it's like a like a sunset sort of i also want to think about what colors will overlap good together she typically is wearing these kind of like greenish shorts and kind of like this pinkish shirt usually um or kind of like blue jean type type color shorts and and then uh I think that's what color I, I've just been in black and white for so long now that I forget what colors I was doing, but that's probably, I think, what it was. And so it's kind of a pinkish shirt and, and regular blue jeans. And uh, yeah, and then uh, her backpack is kind of like a, a tannish green color, sort of like that. We have a lot of this dirt background. So the main thing is her, her skin, though, is kind of a pinkish color. So I definitely don't want to use no pinks in the sky in this area. Otherwise, it's going to overlap and match her her legs. So... Right, let's go ahead and get started then. Uh, one thing you could use is this masking stuff here. This is um, Winston and Newton's uh, watercolor, and it's basically a, an art masking fluid. But this will allow me to do if I paint this on here, is I can mask her out. I can mask out the clouds and some of this outside stuff here. That way, I can take my brush. I can just I can just kind of swipe it straight across and down, without having to worry about trying to do the sky around these objects, and that way it doesn't bleed into them as easy. But I'm actually going to, and that's just one trick you could do. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and go right into it. So I'm going to start out with, with a kind of um, a lighter color blue because you, you can always work your way darker. Um, so I'm going to do this kind of light blue here. And I'm going to mix with a lot of water. This is typically, I'm, I'll put this color here. I probably should be mixing in these individual things here. I typically start with a, a light, very light color, a um, little bit of water, not much color at all for my first go around here and this is just to add some color to the sky sometimes I'll go I'll go hard and I'll go straight on the main thing here is um, I like working with a, a small brush when I'm doing panels with comics because you want to build you want to make sure that you have that room to work with now this is basically this light color is a way for me to get the where I want the color to go wet wherever it's wet that's where the watercolor is going to travel to where it's dry, it's not going to want to travel to, and it won't travel to that easily. So if I add all this, and I make all this wet, and I kind of basically color in where I want to add the colors to, which is around all these objects, 
where the sky is instead of using the this is another technique you can do besides using the the masking I hate waiting for the masking to dry and I'm kind of impatient so I like to work fast and this also helps you work faster and then just over here on the edge where it doesn't get into him and that's pretty much that's pretty much it right there and then while it's wet still I'll take another color and let's say I want I don't know what kind of color I'm going to use here yet but I'm going to pick probably one of these one of these darker blues and I'll probably end up mixing a couple different blues together here but let's see what happens I like to pick up some of the blue here and then let's start with the top here so I'm starting at the top I'm going to add this color and notice how it's going to just kind of blend right into the wetness and I like using the side of the brush for this here working right around the cloud and, and notice it's it's actually pretty easy to go around these objects without them getting the watercolor on them because it's not going to flow into the places where it's dry. It, the watercolors typically want to flow where it's wet. And I still think that the sky probably could have benefited from if I would have put down that stuff, but I'm gonna I kind of like doing it this way here. If I were to put down the masking, I could I could have taken a bigger brush and just did one big stroke, and have it look really cool. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue in here like this in a couple areas. That's kind of coming off the page, so I'm just gonna kind of have it like this. So it's kind of just a little bit of texture there. Now this also comes down to your your own watercolor preference as well. Everyone colors differently. I'm just gonna show you the way that that I personally color with watercolors. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water now. So now as, as I'm adding water, this allows me to take the sky and come down here like so. I'm going to take just a little bit of water again on my brush here. And I'm going to pull down this color into this lower area here like so. And I kind of want this you know, back and forth look here. I could also use a flatter brush but it's not a big deal to me like that. Now, while it's still wet, so it mixes together nicely, I'm going to wash my brush off, and then I'm going to dry it off with a paper towel. I'm not sure if you can see the paper towel on camera, but I just, you know, I, I reuse it quite a bit before I throw it away, as you can see. Now I'm going to take, like, some orange and maybe just a little bit of red. So there's some orange, and then I want to make sure I kind of get that off my... I'm going to add a little bit of orange red now. And I'm going to take this and I want to water it down more because I want it very, very subtle. I don't want the background to be too bright or, or brilliant. I want it to be very subtle in the background. If the colors are, are too, it's kind of the same. Uh, how, do, how do I describe it? It's kind of like if you have everything the same saturation, then nothing really stands out. It's kind of hard to tell what the subject is. Of that, that, you know, where the eye is supposed to go. An easy way to direct the eye is you can have the, the colors in the background be more desaturated, not as colorful as the colors in the foreground. And by doing that, you end up with the foreground being more saturated. It'll bring your attention to the characters that you may, and mainly I want these two characters to be the focus. Uh, she's walking away. And then, you know, he's being talked to. So there we have it. Now, the next thing is to kind of get some, sort of a brown. And I don't have an actual brown. So what I'm going to do is taking some of that orange yellow. And I could I could use maybe just a little bit of blue. I actually do have a kind of a brown, but I don't really like it. So I'm going to just take this, this little bit of blue right here. It's a different kind of blue than what I have over there. And I'm going to mix it in with this here. And I think this makes a good brown, mixing the kind of orangish red with... Uh, that particular kind of blue, for the kind of blue it's called, but it's number 56 on this thing. And I'm going to begin to color in some of this, these background pieces here. And this is the under portion of floating islands that are in the sky. The main floating island is, is, is the floating library. Now, if I want to add more color to that, I need to actually blow dry or let it dry. I'm typically impatient, so what I usually do is I will blow dry it. If you don't want the paper buckling like this, you could actually tape it down on the edges and help it from not buckling as it gets wet. I really don't really worry about it, but I like to kind of work around. So as instead of having to blow dry and wait, if I just kind of work my way around, then I can do the same kind of get the same kind of effect going on here. 
And I'm trying to think what I want to do for the clouds. I think for the clouds, I might do a kind of a gray color. So I have that one blue right here. And I can add that in here. And I think this kind of grayish blue might work. It's already kind of gray blue. I'm going to have it just a little bit more saturated so you can actually see it because it's a very light color to begin with. And I have the light coming from the left hand side. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shape here to my clouds. And what this is going to do is just kind of allow the cloud to have some form to it so it's not flat, so it's a little bit 3D. This cloud here is much, much bigger. And I kind of like, you know, for clouds, I kind of like using this sort of color here. Now, I think that, um, you know, if once you get proficient, I'm, 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 I'm trying to explain what I'm doing at the same time as I'm doing it. I'm kind of like pushing with the tip of the paintbrush and pulling off right here to kind of get, I just want it to fade off right there. And there's another thing called scrubbing where you kind of like, kind of with the paintbrush kind of go like this and you get a little different kind of textures. And there you have it. So now I have, I'm going to get just a little more of this color here. Add a little bit of that blue to it as well. I don't want it too wet. Just adding a few more areas here where you can have some texture going on. If I want to, I can take even a darker color. But again, I want the background to not be too dark. I want the foreground to be darker and the background to be lighter. Another thing is this this plane here. Um, it's grass, um, or you know, you know, that's why I have a little bit of grass here. I can also think about it as being patches of grass, grass and brown. If I want to do that, I can add a little bit of brown colors and oranges in between here and there and then and then the rest of it would be green but I'm not going to do all that I'm just going to color it in kind of this the same kind of brown color that I have the rest of the sky kind of or the not the sky sorry the floating libraries not libraries but in this case islands sorry I'm used to the only the floating library it's the main important one that they're that they're trying to get to to find the answer for the end of all the mindlessness, why people are walking north. No one has the answer. None of the shamans have the answer. Again, I like starting light because it's much easier to darken up watercolors than it is to lighten them up. And so I'm going to kind of add just a little bit of brown there. And then and I'm going to come back in with green after that dries. But so I kind of want um, like a mixture and as I work, I, I kind of um, I kind of don't keep that much track of my colors. I'm kind of weird like that. I kind of just keep bouncing around. Sometimes I'll wipe these out with paper towel if I run out of places. I just keep mixing different colors together and come up with new colors. I don't have specific colors I go back to. If I want a pure color, I just go right to my right to my actual color here. If I want a, a pure color that's not mixed with another color, but I like a lot of colors mixed together. I think it makes watercolors look a lot cooler that way. And so now I got this kind of darker brown color. I'm just using this right now just to kind of come right in here. There's still a little bit of a bleeding. I kind of like that look, so I'm going to let that kind of bleed together a little bit. And I'm going to have this this over here as well be this kind of brown color. And I'm going to have just a little bit of this darker on this side over here because remember the light's coming from that side over there. And where I'm going to have the sunlight hitting, I'm going to do a little bit of yellow. And I think it, but I'll come back in after it's maybe a little bit more dry. Now the the horse kind of creatures are kind of, you kind of see here. They're kind of like gorilla horses. Um, they're they're a unique creature, a unique creature called Obfe. Um, he's blue, and she's kind of more of a pinkish color, not quite flesh color, a little bit more on the pinker side of of the flesh color. And so what I want to do here is um, the horses. I can't remember. I think they're kind of a gray color, kind of like this this sky here. And this, I already have this kind of gray color that I'm going to be putting down for this cloud. And I kind of don't want that to mix with him. But in the cloud here, I'm going to try to keep mostly white. You can also, if you put up, if you put down too much color, you can lift it by just taking a paper towel and just go on the edge there and just press down and just kind of lift it off the page. And that way I don't have it on there. I'm going to kind of make a barrier between him and the cloud, I think. So this is uh, I'm trying to figure. Okay, this one has this kind of like white mark here, on uh, that's her opae, and his 
doesn't have that white mark on it. And the face is kind of a darker color than than the rest of the body. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if I want to go with kind of a blue gray. So I think I might even, it's really rare I ever use black, but I think I might just throw a little bit of black here with this, with this one. Always mix with other colors though. So now I'm going to do this kind of other kind of blue here. And this starts to give me this kind of like darker gray color. And I'm going to use it lightly. So it's going to be not uh, very thick. And this is going to give me that main color of his face here. So I'm going to just kind of come in here like that. And I just work right around. You could Again, you could mask stuff off if you want to take the time to do all that. I'm not going to mask it all off though. All right, so this is the color of his face. His face, again, is a little different color than his body. Like that, and this is gonna be all, like kind of a brownish color for the straps on that are on his figure. And then I'm gonna come in with the darker black, because I don't feel like using ink right now. I can come back in with ink. I just wanna kinda of darken his nostrils here and his other eye. Like so, and I can also come in here and I can just kind of add, this is just less water, exact same, co exact same color, less water. And this is just add a little bit of form to the face. I'm gonna add just a little bit more water here. You can kind of come like so. If you want to, you, can, you know, you can even take even more water and you can kind of, you know, brush out the different shapes you want here. And if I get too dark like that right there, I can just come and take it away a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this blue to it's more of a kind of a gray color. And then I'm gonna come right here to next to the one next to it. I'm gonna add a lot more water. So what this allows me to do if I keep adding water to it, it gets it gets thinner so it's not as dark. And I can I, I can adjust my darkness by how much water's on there. I'm going to add just a little bit of that color there, a little bit, it's almost kind of bluer now. This is just to help it have a little more form here. So I try to think of the three-dimensional form, and then also I got to keep in mind that everything that's hitting it, I kind of trans, like the same way I watercolor or paint in general, is the same way I digitally paint. So I want a little bit of kind of a yellowish um, tone to everything, so I'm going to add yellow over here for right now. I'll add a good amount of this really bright yellow mixed with this other yellow. And this is going to be, again, the light. And I don't want it too neon, so I'm going to take some of this yellow here. And there we go. Now what I'm going to use this for, add a lot more water to this. I want it to be very subtle. I don't want it to be very thick at all. I tab it on the paper towel to see what it looks like. And this is just to add a little bit of that, that color that I want, the light itself. In this case, the sun which has kind of a yellowish tone to it. And I think that's still a little bit too bright, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of dab that off. Just lift it off, it's pretty easy, and that kind of is like more of the color I want. So, in order to get that, I'm just gonna keep dropping water on the edge. I, drop, I, I put it on the edge, I dip my brush to where it's nice and watery, and I take that drop and let it drop down the edge here, and then I mix it up like that. And let's see if this is a little bit weaker now, a little more diffused. There we go, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to kind of hit some of this stuff that I've already painted. And I kind of want to just add a little bit of that, uh, that color to it so that it, you know, I can tell that, hey, those parts are being, being hit with light. I'll come back over that with some green maybe and some drop shadow. But there you have it. So now I have a little bit of light hitting this stuff. I'm going to do the same thing with, it, with his face here. It should be dry enough where I can add some of this in there like that. Now I'm going to work again, work around and letting everything dry. I do want to add just a little bit of yellow at the very bottom of the sunset here. I'm going to kind of work up a little bit into the sky just here and there. And what this does, and maybe a little bit on the, on the edge of the cloud there, maybe a little bit edge of all this, it'll probably be gone over again with other colors. Um, since it's so far in the background, I'm kind of, I'm kind of make everything in the background kind of like a grayish purple so I'm going to start with this kind of bluish gray color that I've been using before. But now I'm actually going to add 
a little bit of another color to it. I'm not sure what color I want to add to it yet. So gray, um, greenish, because they're kind of like you know, bushes and buildings and stuff. So what I'm going to do first is add just the pure kind of gray color here for some of this right here and there. I'll kind of lift it because it's a little too much. I should add rolled it on my paper towel first. This is where the Kiritake brush actually would, I would prefer it um, for detail. One way that one little trick I like to do is after you have the color loaded on your brush, you can take it and you kind of roll it around like this, or you can roll it around inside of here. And just kind of roll it around, that loads up the paint, and you can also roll it in a paper towel, but it also makes it to where it makes a nice fine tip and point. There you go, this one, this is the, this is the actual floating library, that's why it has these buildings coming out of it here. And then I'm going to take that exact same color, but I'm going to add just a little bit of green, kind of a sea green, and I just want to add a little bit of that here. It's going to dry lighter than it actually is. I think the key to, to painting in general and coloring is, is not just having one-dimensional colors, it's having more than one color that's a, anything. So, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of this kind of yellowish color now. And that's going to blend right in with some of this green here. And now you have a multicolor there. And it still looks green, but it's a multicolor. Next, I'm going to work on his blue. He's kind of like this kind of blue all by itself. So he's got this more kind of really dynamic blue, and it's kind of pretty brightly colored. And I'm going to wash him down first. Um, that's probably just a little bit too much. So I'm going to take a little bit of water here and just kind of spread it all over his body really fast. This way I'm just coloring where I want his blueness to be. I really don't like scrubbing with my Kiritake brush, so, so I'm moving in one direction. Just kind of trying to move the water around so that to where it's all kind of, you know, wherever he's at, where I want it blue at. What I like about the, the Kiritake brush, it really does hold a lot of paint. You can you can paint for quite a while, even just fine detail. Oops, I think I accidentally added a little bit of blue there. Take the paper towel, I'm just going to kind of lift it. I'm running out of hands here. There we go. I'm just going to take this paper towel, I'm just going to lift it right there. Where I, it's almost like an eraser. Just bam, just kind of erase some of that. I'm trying to. His hair is black, so I'm not too worried about that. I probably just colored that in with ink anyway. I could, I could, I could use the brush just to show you, but I mean, I'll probably end up doing that actually. All right, now I'm just trying to like get kind of sort of even an even wash here, and then kind of like build it up where I know there's gonna be more, more darkness. And he he is this blue. He's not like a really pale blue. He's more of a darker blue like that. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry a little bit while that's drying. Actually, let me see if I can add on just a little bit of uh, yellow here yet, just to kind of add where I know there's gonna be like some you know, sunlight hitting him. I kind of want to add in that right now. This is why it's bleeding. I kind of like that bleeding effect, and then I can always add more color over top of it after it's dry. Next is her pinkness. So in this case, we're gonna go with just straight red. You don't do red and white like you would do with some Instead, you just take a, a red and then maybe like a red-orange, mix them together, take a lot of water. So instead of white, you add water, and that's how you get pink. So I think that's, I mean, you can also add white if you want to. I do have a white white in here, but I typically tend to go with just, if I want a lighter color, like pink, then just take red and water it down. Bam, you got, you got kind of a pink color now. I might be able to see her hands. Her ears are pink. Um, she's wearing a long sleeve shirt. Now here's a problem. I think that actually the long sleeve shirt I decided to make. The, I think she changed her outfit. So I was like, ah, I can't have pink on pink. So I think I decided to go with this kind of like bluish color, if I remember correctly. So either way, that's what I'm going with. Because again, this is just a tutorial anyway. But I might actually put this up, replace the black and white image that's on there just to have an image you know, one of the pages on there that are kind of black and white and also things are in the background you can kind of if the blues are kind of similar together normally you just kind of use all the same color 
and then I will take a little bit of yellow and we'll add just a little bit like that, like it's coming in there. I notice it kind of bled right into there. The backpack, I'm kind of in it, I think it's kind of a brownish red. And if it's not, well, now it is. Like so, I probably need to let some of that dry. It's a little bit thick there. I come back over here now, and I can take a kind of a darker brown and take it to a little bit of like yellow brown and then a little bit of like orange red. A little bit of just a little bit of this blue here, kind of mix it in there. That's kind of more of a purple. So I gotta dirty it back up with a little bit of yellow to make a kind of a brown color. There we go. Basically, yellow, blue, and uh, if you do like any kind of like pretty much any kind of blue, and then red will make a purplish color. And then from there, you add just a little bit of yellow and you got brown. It's, uh, at least I like that kind of I like that brown color at least myself. Just kind of adding a little bit of detail into some of that there. I might actually add a little bit of brown to some of the rock. I don't want all the rock to be brown. I want some of it to be kind of gray, but I want it to be kind of multicolored. So I'm going to add a little bit of brown. Then I'll add a little bit of the blue-gray to the rock. One thing I like about watercolors is I, I like being able to, you know, blending multiple colors together to kind of get some interesting, cool look to it. Then I'll come and let that dry, then come back over it with detail. Now I need to add some kind of uh, some kind of greens here. And again, um, I'll add more than one green, not just one green, but for now I'm just gonna do one green. But I'll come back in and add other green here and there. I'm gonna add this all this. Actually, I'll make all this kind of green here. Let's kind of add a little bit of grass all the way around right here. Now I'm kind of going that kind of, uh, I'm trying to decide here whether or not, um, like that. I'm going to add a little more water here and I'm going to add a little bit of blue to the screen, make it very watery. And this is going to be more for the background green. So it's kind of a blue green. And the reason why is because as things go in the background, they kind of get distorted by the atmosphere. So if the atmosphere is kind of, you know, purplish blue, you know, like a sunny day, then the atmosphere is going to be kind of a purplish blue. It's kind of a rainy day. It's going to be kind of grayish. Um, you know, on a sunny day, it's always going to be kind of like purplish blue. As things go in the background, they start to take on like trees and stuff will start looking more purple the further they go back. Ones that are a little more closer kind of like start looking more blue. Mountains will kind of look a little bit bluish purple. No, they'll still kind of, you know, have a little bit of brown in them, but for the most part, they'll kind of have that kind of, uh, kind of purplish blue color. And so I'm just kind of mix them together, kind of make them kind of purplish blue for right now. If I want to add more detail later, I can. I want to take the water and I want a really nice, um, almost turquoise to the water here. And I come back over to, to with this certain pin. I'll, I'll show you the pin in a second to add white highlights and it's really cool. Like so. And then for the rest of the bushes and stuff, I'm just gonna kind of go with this brown and uh, we'll add just a little bit of brown in here. Almost like it's the sand. I kind of want it to separate from the other colors. Like so. You don't need a lot of, you know, details in the background. Maybe just a little bit of yellow there. Like so. Now I might take a little bit of this darker color. Actually, I'm going to take a little bit of red here. Add it to this brown. I just want to kind of red it, redden it up a little bit. I also kind of want to thicken up thicken it up a bit maybe. Let's see if that's thicker yet. Kind of want to add it in here. Kind of add some, just a little bit of texture. All these are hand drawn letters. I think that it adds that kind of old school authenticity when you're, you can always, you know, print, you can always ink it on the computer and then print it out. You know, that we have perfect letters. You can, we can type them if you wanted to and then ink in the rest, you know. Just trying to stipple in some 
little bit of texture just so it's not all kind of the same. And sometimes for that, stippling is like where I just make little random shapes like that. So now, now the rock has a little bit of texture to it. He's actually just about the color blue I want him. I don't know if I want him any. Let's see, I might make him a little bit more a little bit more darker in some places than that. Just to kind of bring out some some of the uh, shapes of the body. Where you know where the shadows gonna be hitting and stuff like that. All this right here is going to be underneath here is going to be darker. And for that, I'm actually going to take just a little bit of black. Not much. Just add a little bit of black to this kind of color. Just kind of, you know, I might have added too much. Black goes a long way. But this is just to kind of gray up some of this here. Like, like under shadows. Like where it would normally be like... Uh, Oops, too far over there. I can actually start using this to color in part of his hair. His hair is not like a gray black either, it's black. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna color it all in. I want some of it to where the sun's hitting and that kinda makes it a little bit duller. And that'll also add a little bit of yellow to that as well. That's his ponytail hair coming down here in the back. But adding just a little bit of this colors it starts to kind of fade off a little bit will kind of give me some shape to his form here you gotta kind of you know work with 3d objects and muscles and anatomy and everything kind of figure out where how do things look like when you know they have form to them, so like so. I'm gonna leave his teeth intact there, the kind of white almost. A little bit of darkening around his eyes. Like so, okay. I think that's pretty good. Has some form to him now. I'm gonna come back in with this yellow color again here. I just want to add dabbing off right before I touch it. I just want to add a little bit more yellow where some of the light's hitting him. Because he's like, you know, in the sunlight. And if I feel like I went a little overboard, I can always take it and just kind of dab it just a little bit in some spots. I think his nose looks weird, so I'm going to kind of dab that off. Just maybe add a little bit of pink instead. Even though he has no pink in his body, it's just to add that one up drawing in there. Okay, now I'm going to go in here with this kind of more reddish brown color and start coloring in some of the horse's bridle here or the ope face, I should say. And this is pretty much it. I mean, this is kind of how I do it. I kind of bounce around, think about in layers. The bands on his arms are the same color. I'm going to leave that in the water so I can kind of soak. Bring out my other brush here. The one I don't care about as much is a cheaper brush. Like, I don't mind. And also, um, it's not too cheap, but it is, a, it is a little bit cheaper in price. But still costs... You know, not something you just want to destroy, but it, anyway, it's it just has a thicker, I don't know, bristle to it, and just allows me to scrub easier. So, I scrub even kind of like going like that, almost like scribbling. Add some of this color over here as well. And you know, when I want to color comic book pages, I don't necessarily try to go for um, like obviously I'm not going for ultimate realism. You never, I, I don't, I just think with watercolor in general. You never really want to go for ultimate realism, and that's a little too much. You to have some of that off. But I do. I would. I want to make it to where some of her is like in the sunlight. That's a little bit too much, but there's some. There's some there, and I can. Add, I'm gonna add some 
Uh, I gotta add some. She has kind of like white hair, so not kind of has. She does have white hair, but I need to add this pink back in here to her skin tone, and I add a little bit of a little bit of yellow highlight in her hair, and then there's a little bit in her right here. Just a little bit on the edges there. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm still deciding what I should do with my Gorilla guy now. This is where sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be using that color or that color anymore. I'll start wiping out some of the colors I'm not going to be using. And then uh, other ones I know I'm, I'm going to still use, I can mix together with other colors. I'm going to use this brush again so I can kind of scrub the color, whatever color I decide to use. I think I'm going to kind of go with this kind of... Uh, hmm. I'm going to mix all these blues together and this color, just a dab of it in there. There we go. Uh, I'm mixing out, hopefully uh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm like talking about colors I'm mixing here. Color mixing, uh, this isn't a watercolor tutorial, so it's not really... I might, just, I might have like a little bit of a purple color, I think. can see this kind of purple. I need to get a lot more on there. Okay, now let's get a little bit of purple, blue, and everything. I'm going to kind of do my, I usually do my typical whitewash first. Sometimes I'll leave spaces of white if I want, you know, like, like right over here. Say I want pure, you know, like sunlight where it's hitting. Of course, I'm not going to leave it you know, white, because, I mean, some, I mean, with watercolors, if you, sometimes you do leave just pure white, if you, you know, it's an option. Uh, I typically don't when I'm coloring comics, and I typically don't in my watercolors either, unless I feel that uh, it needs to be pure white, for whatever reason. I really want, I really just want that look for some reason. I'm going to add a little bit of this color into here, so it's not just like one-dimensional color. I'm also I'll also be adding this is added a little bit of shadow to to it. I'll also be adding the uh, yellow too. I'm gonna kind of come in here, just kind of color all this, leaving some white over there. Like so, now he has a, he has just a little bit of white there. I might kind of come in here and add some of this color into the rest of his face here. And this will this kind of just helps unify the colors a little bit more. So everything's not just like, I don't know, looks like it's all not just totally separate colors. It kind of adds a unification to everything that you're doing. Now I'm going to take this other color and add some of that into him as well. So again, he's kind of more multicolored. He's not just all one dimensional of colors. And I'll come back in and add more colors later as well. But for now, I do want to add some of this kind of yellow for the sun. And I'm going to go with a totally different yellow, I think, now. And that's not what I was going for. I accidentally added a little bit of the green, so I should have started a whole new thing. And for the foreground, I just want a little hint of orange in the yellow. I don't want it to be completely bright, bright. There you go, something like that. And this would be more for foreground color stuff here. I kind of want it, you know, I want it to hit different parts of his of his figure. He's not going to be all completely one color. I think it makes it look cooler anyway when it comes to watercolors. Again, having that multicolored effect to everything. A little bit of highlights here where the sun's kind of hitting his leather bands. Put all that kind of dry together. Then I'm going to take this kind of darker color, mix it in here, and mix that together. So I just took the, his main base color and mixed it in with this darker shadow color I used on him. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of shadow here and there to some of the rest of his body here. That's still too wet. I don't think it's going to let me mix it yet. 
well, under his chest, under here, it should be darker. It's all this tone like that. And then we'll let all that kind of bleed dry together. Like so. All right, so I have that nice white cloud behind him. It's kind of funny because his name's Cloud. Her name is Skyla. And I kind of like the just very subtle differences between these background colors, but I think I might just add just a touch of a brown. Sometimes I'll add, I'll just right onto the top of the, just add a touch of brown here to the heel, just for it's not all, all uh, that kind of purplish color, just like that. Okay. Also kind of adds a little bit of dimension to the background there. He's a little bit too um, not blended, so I'm going to kind of come here. If you kind of just take a wet brush and kind of hit the edges, you can come sometimes, even if it's fully dry like it is now, you can still blend the edges together. Just hit the edges with water and it'll start to blend those colors together. And be very, very careful with just the tip of it because you don't want to like blend everything out. But I just want to blend the edges out so it's not so hard, like so. Now it's a little bit softer, as you can see. It's not like just like straight hard. And then I'm going to take this color here. Just add a little bit right here, right there. Just want to show some more shadow. I might, I might even just take blue now and just kind of come like this. This is where it's all kind of, all this is kind of just blending in the bottom of the page. So it's not all just kind of plain. I'm going to add a little bit of blue now to the grass. And this is where I'm going to add stippling. So you can kind of see that, hey, this is kind of like grass and and uh, ground together, you know, bushes. And you just add a little bit of texture. I'm going to add some texture to the rock as well. I usually let it, you know, let it dry and then come in and do that. I'm going to add just a little bit right in here, like, game kind of flick down and up like it's little blades of grass or something right there. All right, so after that, then I usually blow dry it. And I think everything is just about dry enough, not quite, though. Still want to? I still want to add this kind of darker parts here on this side of his body. I really want that to come through and and show that hey, this is it has some form to it. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and pause and blow dry really fast. Actually, I'll just I'll cut it out. I'll hear. I'll be able to see the sound file and see that uh, I'm blow drying. All right, so I can come in and start doing some final touches. And really, the main thing I wanted to do is, for final touches, I wanted to add this kind of dark color, um, add a little bit of deeper purple, and this color together. Let's see. I just want to see if I can add this darker color here. And it's going to dry lighter, so I got to keep that in mind. But I just I wanted to. And then now I'm going to add just a little bit of black because I do want this to be definitely darker. Now, as you can see, if you've seen the detail I put into when I, when I work digitally, I put a lot more detail into digital work than I do with watercolors. It's because I like my watercolors to have this kind of loose, looser look to it, but I still want there to be form. I think form is so important to everything you're drawing. You really want to make sure things have form. So I'm adding some shadow here. And this is just not uh, thick enough, I don't think, to really add the amount of shadow I want. So I'm trying to get it in there. In on this part here. I'm going to start doing like that kind of texture thing here. You can kind of see texture in his arm. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna almost use like I'm gonna just go straight black almost and just a little bit of like this kind of purplish color it's a little bit of black and purple and I really want to make sure I get some of this really dark where I have the shadow this is also to help it to where it separates it now keep in mind you can always go back and use pen work as well like you don't have to do everything with watercolor and the whole point is you're, you're you know you're doing comic art so you're you're inking everything anyway unless you want that kind of non you know non ink to look then you can come just straight in with watercolor and everything you know right over like pencil or something everything will have that kind of watercolor look to it and that'd be kind of cool for a comic book i think but i mean just adding a little bit of texture here and there just kind of make it look like there we go. So now he has a little bit of texture to him. So he, he kind of he kind of stands out a lot too. And uh, these are the main characters. You know, he's kind of talking to her him. She's kind of the main character right now. She's kind of in the background. But um, even though she's in the background, I'm going to take this kind of red and, and add a little bit of this color to it. Now I get this kind of more diluted gray, kind of purplish color. I'm going to add just a little more red to it. Like so. And this will be the darker color I'm going to use in the background for kind of shadowing some of this here. All right, so after blow drying, then I'd add the final touches. And the final touches I do with this uh, pin here, I ordered this online. It's a Japanese um, company here. It's called Signo UM153 Uniball. Kind of shake it up. It's made to go right over everything, over ink, whatever you want it to go over. And I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight here to his eyes, a little bit of sparkle to the horse's eye. I'm going to add some highlight to her hair here, to her body. I want, I want to be careful not to kind of like get rid of some of the line work, but I don't mind if some of it's gone. I just want to add just a little bit of highlights here, especially on the cloud right there where I kind of went over too much. Add some highlight white here. And typically it's used for just like line work, but it's adding a little bit, a couple like lines. Add some like highlight there for the shadow of, or from the highlight of the, uh, of the, like where the glass, you know, this is a glass building, so it's kind of being hit with light just for it kind of glows a little bit. And this is where I really like to use it right here. So let me see if I can get this out of my way. I'm not see if I can. I'm going to get it out of my way. Add just a little bit of white here like this and come in here and just add a little bit of like highlighted white areas. And if this was, you know, if the water were darker, you'd be able to see this more, but it's pretty, you know, in the background there. I was just kind of, I was going to add a little bit of stippling just to kind of show, you know, like especially near the shore areas, like right here, kind of blend off. I'm going to kind of cover up the the black line so it kind of shows that kind of stippling and then uh, with him if I want to I can add just a color you know just a few little hairs here and there that the lights hitting and this will just add a little bit of like contrast near, near the dark areas I can add just, I also want to make his band have this kind of white line going across it right here that just shows that it's kind of more of a this doesn't seem to be as white as what it usually is it might not be totally dry it might be why the paper I have to blow dry a little bit more it's also good for like like adding little extra texture on the rock where the light is so coming from the side of the light and just kind of adding right into the dark it's a technique I also teach in digital painting is you know dark on light light on dark and what that does it just kind of adds that kind of texture look I'll give you that some in here I think that's pretty much it. Um, 
I might add maybe just a little bit of white here to his ear, to his mouth here. I kind of want that to be white. And then I'm going to come back in here with an actual brush pin. Or actually I'll just, I'll just use a regular, regular pin actually, what I used ink with. Just want to make sure his eyes are coming through and are visible in his eye, eyebrows as well. And then his hair, I want to make sure it's black. I could do this with a brush, but again, it's comic book, so you can go right over it with your your ink. And I'm going to leave just a little bit like that, so it has a little bit of grayness to it, so it's not completely, like, that's like kind of like where the light's hitting it, so it's not just completely washed out, and there you have it, so just trying to think here if there's anywhere else I just kind of want to thicken up and I'm going to kind of come here like so there's some of these parts I just want to be a little bit more clear that it's uh, overlapping and that's one thing that's cool you know about this kind of you know fusion is that you're it's still in the end it's still comic work so you know and because I do ink, my comics, even if I color them with watercolor, I kind of thought about doing one where I don't ink at all, just using the pencil, just like just straight watercoloring it. That might be kind of cool. But again, I want—I just want some of this to kind of show through, make it very clear the distinctive lines between the characters here. It's where that way. The forms aren't completely lost here. And there you have it. So now that kind of just brings out just a little bit more. And her in the background, I don't think she needs any more black. But the foreground, I think, really did need that little extra black. And that kind of helps everything kind of pop out just a little bit more. And that's pretty much it, folks. Hopefully this helps you. Now, typically to color a panel this pig, and you can kind of see it's um, about a third of the paper. And so it's quite it's quite a big panel, and so and keep in mind I'm using small brushes. So even if this panel was huge, I would use bigger brushes. So it still take around the same amount of time. But typically, for this kind of level of detail, I can usually bust out in like 20, 30 minutes, because I'm explaining what I'm doing on the way and thinking, and I'm showing you guys some. You know, I'm I'm not just like busting out. Like I'm not just going and. I like when I'm in the zone, I can do it in like 20, 30 minutes. But uh, when you're doing a tutorial, you're like thinking about stuff and what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. And so it kind of uh, makes it take a little bit longer. Just add a little bit of extra shape and texture to his face there. And yeah, so there you go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hey, I know it's been a long time since I did a art tutorial. And um, the, what mainly motivated me was seeing that there were people commenting on my art videos, not just commenting on my most popular video, which is the, Warsh the official Warshak ink block test, are you, an, are you crazy video. That one gets an insane amount of attention, insane amount of comments. That's really, really popular. And, um, you know, so I'm like, well, I'm going to just kind of put off doing some art stuff for a while and focus on my, on my growth stuff because I need to focus on that anyway. And that is um, perfectsunled.com. That's perfect sun, S-U-N, then L-E-D.com. And that's where I have my, uh, my free grow course on how to, how to grow marijuana. Uh, anyway, so I've been focusing on that a lot because I also have my LED light company, but it's kind of discouraging and I just, you know, it's like, well, you know what, if people don't want to care, if, if people don't like show interest in my free art tutorials, then it kind of less motivates me to make them. And I got, I got a lot of love from my grow community and, you know, they're like, yeah, they, you know, I always get a lot of comments and stuff and it keeps me motivated to keep making them free videos of my grows and how to grow and stuff like that. Uh, with art, you know, it's kind of, I don't really have that. So I haven't made a, a actual paid course in a while either, but I do plan on making a paid course and one will be how I think it'd be either more details, you know, like, like this was just kind of like kind of how I color 
uh, a page. This wasn't really um, an in-depth tutorial of, of how to do it and everything like that. And I gave some tips and tricks. So it's more of a tips and tricks on how, how I color with watercolor. The course would go into great detail and, and break everything down and stuff like that, different different tricks you can do and kind of go into some some watercolor techniques as and how to use watercolors, some basics of watercolors that way for so that for those that don't have any you know any experience in watercolors, how you can take that and color your comic book pages with it. But um, I also plan on doing one how to, how to actually ink your comic books. You know how can you ink them both traditionally with these cool pens. I really like this you know these pens here. Um, so inking it traditionally, and and why you know why is he darker? See how much see I have the dark areas here, the thicker bolder lines, different thickness of lines, broken up lines, things like that. How to do that and how to make things look cool like fur and grass and things like that and fire. And, and when sometimes it's necessary to, to break up lines and stipple or stipple lines like that, where you kind of break up the lines rather than make them solid. Um, yeah. And uh, so it'd be a whole, and also teaching how to do it digitally as well, using like a, a bamboo tablet or a Cintiq tablet or something like that. But yeah. Anyway, as you can see, it's like got kind of this kind of universal color theme. Why? Because I continually mix colors together. So I'm like, hey, I'm gonna add yellow to this color. I'm gonna add this kind of these kind of colors together. So a color that I used here, I'm gonna add to there. And as you saw throughout the thing, I've added different colors together, and it kind of has this kind of more unified color theme to it, even though there's a bunch of different colors. And notice that these two characters really stick out because of how much deeper their colors are compared to how much more pale the colors are in the background. These are much more saturated, um, so and and just darker in general. So more contrast. All right, guys. Again, thanks for watching. Check out my other channels. Um, I have them linked, so click on my Learn to Draw link. You'll see right there in the video, right above, or right below the actual video, you'll see my name, Learn to Draw. Click on that. That takes you to my channel's homepage. On the right-hand side, you'll see the different channels there. I got uh, my Asmer channel, my game channel, and things like that. And also, I don't just, I want, I want, really quickly before I close this video out, just so you guys know, I don't just do art on this channel. I know it's called Learn to Draw, but it originally started with video games. The very first, you know, this was back before you were able to name your channel on, on YouTube, before Google bought it out and everything. I've been on here a long time. And I started out with like uh, video game playthroughs and just funny little goofy videos and video game reviews. It was, it was mainly just like me playing video games and stuff. And then someone one day said, hey, you know, you draw and you're, you're a good teacher. Why don't you just go ahead and make some teaching videos on how to draw? I was like, okay, cool. Uh, another um, one I'm going to be coming out with soon is I'm really passionate about jiu-jitsu and I've been in martial arts for a long time for those that have ever paid attention to my videos and, and listen to me when I talk about my life a little bit. But I've been in martial arts a long time and I really love jiu-jitsu. And uh, the main thing that's really frustrating um, is when you first get into jiu-jitsu class, if you don't know any the basics, is just getting your butt whipped you know, really easily. And it kind of sucks, you know, like when you roll for the first time, just how easy you get stomped and you're just you're like, you feel like a pretzel just getting mouthed up, you know, if you don't have experience at all. And they don't teach the basics, like, you know, why to shrimp, when to shrimp and the hows and whys of things, but just the most basic stuff, the most, the most, the stuff you need to survive. And so I'm going to be, you know, just making a free video on that. Uh, so for those interested, stay tuned and it's to be really cool and it's to be totally free and, and there's nothing out there like it. And I have a unique teaching style in how I teach things. I teach the hows and the whys. This wasn't really like a, like I said, this wasn't really a tutorial, more of a tips and tricks. I didn't teach like all the hows and whys in great detail like I usually do, but I did teach a little bit of it. But um, if you watch one of my courses, you know, my art courses, you'll see that. If you watch, you know, some of my, uh, my grow videos, how to grow, you'll see the how and why. And, and other, other free tutorials here on here, you'll see more of the hows and whys. I, I did go through a little bit of hows and whys. But I, I, I go through more, more great detail. But one example like what you did to is would be like, hey, uh, some people might say, you know, um, don't don't leave your hands out in the open, you know, when, when you're on when you're when you're on your back. Uh, don't don't ever just lay flat on your back. And the Gracies will, will disagree with that. And, um, you know, just, you know, just get you get conflicting information. But the, the main thing is why though, why don't, why do I want to keep my hands in is because if you keep your hands out when, when they have mount, you're more susceptible to getting, to get your arm into a Kimura or get your arm into Americana, um, getting arm barred. Uh, especially if you put your hand up, you know, one hand up across and grab their like shoulder or something, trying to like push them off, you know, boom, they can, they can get an inside arm bar. So you just little things like that. So like, why do you, why, like how to protect, how to protect yourself? 
and how to survive, but also why you're doing that thing, because what will happen if you don't? And that why is super important. So stay tuned for that, guys, uh, for those who are interested in fighting. Also, um, if I'm on, on Udemy, and this will be advertised to all my students on Udemy once I come out with it, I'm, I'm working on a uh, street jitsu. So basically, it's jujitsu for the street, but also um, a lot of street fighting techniques that can help you not get your butt beat in a street fight. And if you need to, how to be brutal, but practical for everybody, something that any, any, that anyone will be able to do. And it's not sport jujitsu because sport jujitsu could work in a street fight, but there's so many things where in sport, in sport jujitsu where someone's mounted on you and you're on the bottom, you can actually, you're, you're comfortable with that space between you guys. And that's not good because that's, that's someone coming down and pounding on your face. And, um, you know, in a street fight, you know, you're done. So, you know, it's, it's to, it, it, it's it takes, it's, it's street jitsu. It's, 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 it's jujitsu for the street jujitsu for an actual street fight where punches and stuff like that. Imagine if you had a jujitsu match where punches and kicks were allowed, kind of like, kind of like MMA, but different because street fighting is still different than, you know, MMA is still not a real fight. You can bite in a real fight. There, there are things like that to be, to be aware of. Um, you know, it's very rare that someone will actually try to bite you in a, in a street fight, but it's still a possibility you want to be aware of it or hand, hand cup and pop your eardrum type of, you know, and it's very rare someone will do that either. But also, you know, I, I've done boxing for a long time and Muay Thai tournaments and stuff. So it incorporates a lot of, you know, some other different arts too for standing, but, but mainly you want it, you know, most fights end up on the ground. So you want to know how to defend yourself on the ground and uh, street jitsu is, is how to do that. And, and it's not just jujitsu, it's, it's jujitsu made for the street, but that's a tutorial or a course I'll be coming out with for people that, you know, cause I think everyone deserves and needs to know how to defend themselves and not, not just females, everybody. And, uh, it's important, you know, because you, know, you never know when you, when you'll need to defend yourself properly. Uh, you, you know, you think that oh, I'll never have to. You know, that situation will never arise, and then it arises, and something really bad can happen. You know, maybe you get really badly hurt in the hospital or something like that, or or, or worse, some you know, someone gets killed or something like that. I mean, street fights happen, bad things happen. You know, just watch YouTube, and you know, you never know if you're going to be that person. Also. It's for people that are bullied a lot, and this way you could defend yourself when you're being bullied and not be bullied anymore. But you can do it in such a way that you know, if you want, if you want to, I mean, if the guy's just bullying you, this is a way to like defend yourself without having to hurt him really bad, um, you know. But when your life's in jeopardy, I teach, I teach, you know, variations of the technique to where you can hurt the person very, very badly, so you know that for sure you can get away. Um, all right. Anyway, so stay tuned for that. For those that are interested in fighting, let me know. Please leave a comment in the video that that you know you're looking forward to that street jitsu uh, course, and also for that free um, you know introductory to jujitsu in general. This is how not to get. This is not for street fighting. The free court, the free video is going to be about how to survive jujitsu and 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 how to and how not to get discouraged and how to stay in jujitsu, not to feel like you're getting a pretzel. How, basically, how to defend yourself in jujitsu as a white belt and not get stomped by a blue belt. And believe me, it's really not that easy, or excuse me, it's really not that hard to defend yourself against a blue belt and not get tapped out, even as a white belt, if you know these, these the, the fundamentals, that's really important, um, how, how to keep position, how knowing what they're trying to do, why they're trying to do it, and how to defend against it, and just learning the very basics. And it doesn't take very long to learn those few basic things you, you need to know as a beginner. And I wish that every jiu class would do that, but they don't. Instead, they go like this. You show up at class, you happen to be on... You know, it's say it's ten plan jitsu. They're work they're working on C that day, and uh, so you're, you know, I can't remember what C is right now. But you're you're working on these different moves, these different move sets, and then they're like, after after you're done, or if you if you go to a, a Gracie you know, Academy or just any Brazil, Brazil, Brazilian jiu jitsu or just a jiu jitsu place in general, then they're drilling arm bars that day. And after you're done drilling arm bars, it's your very first day. Like all right, it's time to roll. In other words, it's time to spar. You've never sparred jiu-jitsu in your life. You know, it's your first day, and you know maybe maybe you choose not to spar because of that, or maybe you know they can encourage you and you like you go try it against another white belt. But that white belt's been there longer than you, and they know some of the basics. They learn learn through the, the you know hard school of Knox. They learn the hard way, and and you get stomped, and you just feel horrible, and you, you never go back again. Hopefully, this will get a lot of people to to go and try jiu-jitsu again if you quit. Because not now you'll know how to defend yourself and not just get tapped out, you know, so easily. Maybe not even tapped out at all. And anyway, so I talked too long about that. So thank you guys for watching. And as I say on my on my grow channel, 
Double peace.